Faith for Today with Colin Urquhart and Julia Fisher. We're basing our programmes this week on the prophecy of Isaiah. We're looking at Isaiah 42 today. And you're very much making the point in all these programmes, Colin, that these words apply to Israel and they also apply to us today. Yes, um, today we're going to look at a scripture that we see applies particularly to Jesus. Uh, There are several passages in Isaiah which are obviously a direct prophecy of what God would do through the coming of Jesus. Uh, And in Isaiah 42 we have one of these passages. Uh, Now, of course, we will see that these prophecies to a great extent were therefore fulfilled when Jesus came for the first time. And in all these prophetic words, what was not fulfilled in his first coming will be fulfilled in his second coming. But let's let's go through um, these words and we'll we'll, um, see how how closely these scriptures have been fulfilled. And I, and I, I I want you to understand this so that, you see, if we see that God has already fulfilled certain promises in a very, very direct way, then we can believe that those promises are yet that are yet to be fulfilled certainly will be fulfilled in just as sure a manner. So in Isaiah 42 verse 1 we read, Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen one in whom I delight. I will put my spirit on him, and he will bring justice to the nations. He will not shout or cry out or raise his voice in the streets. A bruised reed he will not break, and a smoldering wick he will not snuff out. In faithfulness he will bring forth justice. He will not falter or be discouraged till he establishes justice on earth. In his law, the islands will put their hope. This is what God the Lord says, he who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and all that comes out of it, who gives breath to its people and life to those who walk on it, I, the Lord, have called you in righteousness. I, have, I will take hold of your hand. I will keep you and will make you to be a covenant for the people and a light for the Gentiles, to open eyes that are blind, to free captives from prison, and to release from the dungeon those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name. I will not give my glory to another or my praise to idols. See, the former things have taken place and new things I declare. Before they spring into being, I announce them to you. Now, these are wonderfully rich verses. We can see there's a a threefold call in these verses. First of all, they speak obviously of Jesus. He is the one who came and in whom the Lord delighted. You remember after his baptism by John the Baptist, the voice was heard from heaven, this is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased with, in whom I delight. Uh, I will put my spirit on him and at that time, the Spirit of God came upon Jesus. He will bring justice to the nations. How has he done that? Well, he's established his kingdom here on earth, but of course he took all the injustice and all the sin and negativity upon himself when he went to the cross in order that now we might be justified before God. That means made righteous and totally acceptable in God's eyes. So we can see that that those are words that were fulfilled in Jesus. They're actually also um, 
a call to his people Israel to be the faithful servant whom he upholds, a chosen nation in whom he wants to delight. He wants to pour out his spirit upon his people Israel, and he wants to, through Israel, bring justice to the nations. That's very interesting because there's lots in Scripture that says that Israel is going to impact the nations before Jesus comes again. But obviously, thirdly, they are also a word to us today, to believers, Gentiles, uh, as well as Jewish believers. And we can take them personally. You are my servant, whom I uphold. You are my chosen one, in whom I delight. I will put my spirit on you, and I'm going to use you to bring justice to the nations. Now, that doesn't mean that you will necessarily travel the nations, but you will bring the justice of God, the truth of God, the peace of God, the revelation of who God is to the people who are all around you uh, in your particular situation. And then a little later on in that passage that I read, God speaks to his people. He speaks as the one who gives breath to his people, and life to those who walk here on earth. And what does he say to us? I, the Lord, have called you in righteousness. I will take hold of your hand. That is true about Jesus. It is actually true about Israel. But it's true for every one of us who are believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, who have been grafted into the new Israel of God. I the Lord your God have called you in righteousness. So you can take this personally for yourself. I will take hold of your hand. What did Jesus say? I am always with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. I will take hold of your hand. I will keep you and make you to be a covenant for the people and a light for the Gentiles. Now, you see, what Jewish people need to understand is that that is a direct prophecy about the coming of their Messiah. And it's been fulfilled in Jesus. With his blood, he inaugurated a new covenant that has become a light for the Gentiles. Uh, the Messiah is not just a Jewish Messiah. He is the savior of the world. He's Jewish in the sense that he came to the nation of Israel, but his ministry is for the world. Jesus confined his ministry within the area of Israel when he was on earth, but he made clear in several ways that the repercussions of what he was doing in Israel were for the nations, for the world, and that what he did on the cross was to make real for all people of all generation and all nationalities what he had done in one generation and in one locality while he was here on earth. So uh, we are able to be healed and saved and delivered because of the work of the cross, the blood that brought into being that new covenant and so we inherit this call as those who belong to the new covenant to be a light for the Gentile nations. Jesus said, I am the light of the world, didn't he? But he also said to the disciples, you are the light of the world. And the commission that he gave to the church before he ascended to heaven was go into all the world, not just Israel, but go into all the world and make disciples in every nation, amongst every people group. So we are part of that whole process. And what is it going to involve? Well, it's going to involve what it, what it meant for Jesus when he was on earth, uh, what it has meant throughout the history of the church, what it means for us today to open eyes that are blind, both blind spiritually and even blind physically, to free captives from prison, 
to free all those who are in bondage, in bondage to sin, in bondage to the devil, in bondage to self, in bondage to demonic powers, and to release from the dungeon those who sit in darkness. We are called to give to others the light of the revelation of the truth of Jesus Christ and of the kingdom that he came to give us. So <clears throat> we can see as we fulfill the command of God to take his life and to take the truth of the gospel into the lives of others, new things spring forth, just as he said. New life is imparted to others. People are born again. They're set free from the people that they are and actually become a new creation, something brand new. So that is true for people today and will always be true until Jesus comes again. So we see the richness of all these scriptures. But as we have in the previous days this week, so today, take these words for you personally. God is saying to you, I, the Lord, have called you in righteousness. I will take hold of your hand. I will keep you and make you to be a covenant for the people, a light for the Gentiles, for those all around you, to open eyes that are blind, to free captives from prison, and to release from the dungeon those who sit in darkness. You've been listening to Faith for Today, presented by Julia Fisher. This program is sponsored by Kingdom Faith. For further information, visit our website, kingdomfaith.com. 